Alex Honnold, Michael Phelps with a beard, Andrew Huberman mid-whistle. With an all-star cast of sponsors, Whoop promises to take your training to the next level. High on the hype, I shelled out $300 for an annual membership. 100 entries later, I've dug into the data and found that my Whoop is... Now, tons of people love Whoop, and I'm just one lowly data scientist. But nonetheless, I think it's important to show you how I came to this conclusion. I'm not gonna cover all of Whoop's features, but I am gonna deep dive into the following. The strain recommendation, the heart rate measurement, the sleep tracker, the recovery impact, and the strength trainer. Each of these features is a great idea, but the implementation, well... Whoop Strain Recommender is their core feature. It calculates your recovery during your sleep and then recommends how hard you should push yourself the next day based on that recovery. The recovery calculation is based on your resting heart rate, your heart rate variability, your respiratory rate, and your sleep performance. All of these variables feel like they would strongly correlate with your performance the next day. But when I looked into the data, this was overwhelmingly not the case. What we have here on the x-axis is how much I actually pushed myself in a day versus what Whoop recommended. So if you go farther to the left, I was not pushing myself as hard as they recommended. And if you go way to the right, I was pushing myself way harder than they recommended. So for example, if the x-axis value is 10, maybe Whoop recommended that I have a strain of five for that day, but I actually went to 15. And if the value on the x-axis is negative five, maybe Whoop recommended that I go to 15, but I actually only went to 10 that day. The y-axis tells us how did my recovery improve the next day. You'd expect that if I was close to the optimal strain, my recovery would improve the next day. So what you'd expect this data to look like is it going upward as you approach zero, as I'm getting closer to Whoop's recommendation, and then it's getting negative. My recovery is not gonna be as good if I'm not as close to Whoop's recommendation. But what's the actual trend of this data? Weirdly enough, my recovery actually slightly improves as I overshoot Whoop's recommendation more and more. I also looked at the absolute values in the x-axis here. What this means is it's just looking at how far off I was from Whoop's recommendation. Whether negative or positive, it doesn't care, it's just how close was I to Whoop's recommended. And it turns out there's no correlation between my recovery the next day and how close I was to their recommendation. So from what I can tell, adhering to Whoop's advice provided no additional recovery benefits for me the next day. I also want to note that there was a huge subjective difference between how Whoop said I could perform that day and how I actually felt able to perform. Last week, I had two days in a row with really high strain. I woke up the third day exhausted. Clearly, I needed a rest day. Whoop, on the other hand, recommended that I go harder this day. And this is ironic given that they'd said I needed to go easy the two preceding days in which I felt really good. I spoke to my very smart and very fit friend Emma about this to see if she'd shared my experience. Sometimes I wake up and it will say that I should only take on a strain of say like nine. I'm like, God, I am like ready to take on the day. If I wouldn't, if, if I didn't look at the data, I could probably do two workouts in a day and do a nice long walk and feel super energized and revived. So sometimes I almost don't want to look at what it's telling me in the morning because I feel like it's a mental... Um, it can block you from performing as you actually could. Exactly. I've consistently experienced a wide gulf between how I feel subjectively and what Whoop is recommending. Probably the primary reason that my strain recommendations are so bad is that the heart rate measurements aren't very good. There's a saying in data science, garbage in, garbage out. If the data you get in is bad, then the predictions you spit out will be bad as well. And the WHOOP 4.0's measurements are indeed bad. Let's go through three not so quick examples. The first example was my weightlifting session this Tuesday. I wore a Garmin heart rate monitor around my chest, which I found to be the gold standard of heart rate measurement using methods that are pretty much beyond the scope of this video. But believe you me, I have nerdily verified the veracity of these measurements in multiple ways. And when we look at my Garmin heart rates, this makes a lot of sense for a weightlifting session. Quick heart rate spikes during the sets themselves, followed by one to two minutes of my heart rate going down as I'm resting between sets. And at the end, my heart rate is fairly high for about 10 minutes because I was working abs. Now let's compare that with my whoop strap measurements for the same session. These things are all over the place. It catches some of the spikes, but it drastically underestimates my heart rate between sets. And at the end, while I was doing sit-ups and Russian V-twists, it thought I was going all out. Later that same day, I biked to lunch with a couple friends. On the bike ride back, I was riding quickly, but I really wasn't pushing too hard. You can tell because I was in jeans and a long sleeve, and when I got back, I looked like this. 
Not sweaty at all. But my whoop strap measured this bike ride as being eight and a half minutes at my 90 to 100% heart rate. If I spent eight and a half minutes going all out, I would be coming back drenched in sweat and barely able to walk. I'll put the phone right in front of me and I will look at my heart rate as I'm running. The heart rate will start off fairly normal and then with like a minute or two in, it just spikes like crazy. And it will say that my heart rate's at like 200 beats per minute. I'm like, there's no way my heart rate is at 200 beats per minute. And finally, let's jump to me this morning. So I'm going for an easy run this morning. And as you can tell, I'm at a nice easy pace. The path is super flat. My heart rate's around 142, according to my chest strap. And I can kind of confirm that using the talk test. The talk test is that I can say a full sentence and it's not like super easy, but it's not impossible. So I'm gonna be tracking my heart rate here, making sure that I'm under 150, and then we'll compare that to what the whoop has to say. Once again, my Garmin chest strap was able to see that I was in my mellow aerobic zone, around 150 BPM. Meanwhile, I don't even know what's going on with the whoop here. It seems to eventually figure it out, but it's a mess at the beginning. And it's worth noting that this dip here is when my whoop strap got a little loose, so I tightened it. Now you may say, hey, you tightened your whoop, so of course it's gonna be less accurate. But let me also point out, and I did tighten the chest strap through this workout as well. All this is to say that at least in my personal experience, the whoop strap heart rate measurements are completely useless. I think that Whoop's sleep tracker is their most accurate feature. From what I can tell, it's doing a pretty good job of accurately measuring when I fall asleep and how deep my sleep is. But their recommended sleep is based on your day's strain, which I've already shown is wildly inaccurate. They'll often recommend that I get 10 hours of sleep. And if I go to bed a little earlier at 9.30 to try to catch extra sleep, I'll just end up waking up at 5.30 fully alert because I got my eight hours. I've also optimized my sleep environment. So I think this is a pretty trustworthy indicator that I don't need more sleep than that. One minor issue I'll note with the Whoop is that it doesn't pick up my naps. I nap maybe one to two times per week and it's never caught that. You can just enter the naps manually, which isn't particularly convenient, but that's not the end of the world. One bigger issue with the sleep tracker is I think my Whoop comes loose or something while I'm sleeping. I don't know what I'm doing while I'm asleep, but sometimes I have blank periods in the sleep and this completely screws up my recovery estimate. The recovery impacts analysis tells you how different behaviors impact your recovery. This is a super cool concept, but don't trust the results just yet. In statistics, there's this devilish concept called confounding variables. Say you see a correlation between variables A and B, like deaths by drowning and ice cream consumption. That correlation does actually exist. So does higher ice cream consumption cause more drownings, or does the depression ensuing from more drownings cause higher ice cream consumption? Well, neither. They're both caused by warm weather. And warm weather in this case is the confounding variable. Confounding variables are something that affects two variables you're looking at, but actually those two variables are only related through the confounder, like the warm weather. And what I found in my recovery impact analysis was a lot of confounding variable problems. Take for example, family and friends. That improved my recovery by 3%. But I typically connect with family and friends on weekends when I'm able to catch up on more sleep. So weekends is the confounding variable here. Also, early workouts improved my performance by 4% and cold showers decrease my performance by 5%. But I only take cold showers on mornings where I don't do early morning training. So it makes sense that the impact of both would be exactly the same strength in opposite directions. And now I don't know if cold showers actually impact my performance at all. This doesn't make the impact tracker useless. It just means that you should view these results with a grain of skepticism. I felt like Whoop's calorie expenditure estimates for me were way too low, so I compared it to my data and here's what I found. This is what Whoop said my daily calorie expenditure was between August and September of 2023. On the y-axis, you have the number of days, and on the x-axis, you have the number of calories. So this is a distribution of the amount of calories that I burned each day during that period. Fortunately, I logged all the calories I consumed during that period as well. When you superimpose these two distributions, you see that I tend to consume more calories than Whoop is saying that I burned. And in fact, based on Whoop's estimates, I was in an average daily calorie surplus of 110 calories. So over the 45 days of this analysis, you'd expect that I would have gained about 0.6 kilograms or one pound. But in fact, my weight trend went down by 1.2 kilograms or 2.6 pounds. This implies that I was in an average caloric deficit per day of 220 calories, which means that on average, every single day, Whoop is underestimating my calorie burn by 330. 
that's pretty bad. Pretty much every fitness device isn't great with weightlifting. To Whoop's credit, they designed a huge feature to address this problem, the strength trainer. But as of September 2023, this feature is a hot mess. You have to create your workouts beforehand, which takes a very long time. And then during your workouts, you have to log every single set, how many reps you did, and what the weight was. So you're guaranteed to spend your entire time at the gym tapping numbers into your phone. I've used this feature for four times a week over a month now, and every single time I go to save my workout, this happens. Okay, it's saving. That's what we'd expect. Still saving. It takes, takes a, it takes a little time, all right. You know, that's a lot of data that you've gotta upload. Okay, nope, nope, oh, it failed. All right, let's, uh, let's try that again. Let's, okay, so it's saving. Yep, that's right, it takes a very long time. Mm-hmm, oh, it failed again. Ah, okay, let's try a, let's try a third time, yeah. Oh, okay, here we go. Whoop, why? Okay, I'll, I'll try, okay, oh, what the hell? It fails on first try every single time. Typically, it doesn't require three retries, but that happens. For a premium priced product, the strength trainer feature feels more like something you'd pay $4 for on the app store. Well, my Garmin watch is certainly better at estimating calorie burns during bike rides and runs but it's not great for resistance training. But I've already kind of mentioned the gold standard here. If you want really good insight into how hard you're pushing yourself during your workouts, just use a chest strap to measure your heart rate. The WHOOP is a brilliant concept, and it's understandably really fun to look into your data and feel like you're understanding your recovery better. But as I've seen with my own data, the garbage in prevents any of this from actually being useful. So what would I recommend? Get seven to nine hours of sleep a night, Exercise when you don't feel fatigued. If you feel fatigued, take a day off. That'll probably get you 99% of the way there and save you $300. Again, a lot of it is common sense. Like, did I sleep well? Did I eat nourishing food that's fueled my body? Did I do a workout that felt good? Did I stretch afterwards? Was it a particularly stressful day? You know, just the, the main sort of like common denominators that you would- Actually checking in with your body. With your body, with yourself, right?